Well, last year when I came out here, there was a, a little group of people, and we came out and we had quite a cosy little chat. And it's fantastic to see so many more people here this year. And it probably follows the theme of where Neighbourhood Watch has been on its journey. I'm not sure whether Ray put me first because he thought I'd behave and keep to time, or whether he thought that the others could sort out if I made a mess. <laughs> um, I'm very passionate about Neighbourhood Watch, so it's never a difficult subject to talk about. But before I talk about where we're going, I'd just like to reflect a little on where we've been over the last year. It's certainly a story to be proud of. Last year when I wrote an article for our Sentinel magazine for the December edition, I wrote 2013 will see the green and white of Neighbourhood Watch increase its community connectedness, actively target crime hotspots and increase community safety education programmes with targeted campaigns both in its own right and in, its, in partnership with other community safety organisations. Always one for just a few words. I can tell you that not only did we achieve that, but we achieved much, much more. So I've just been writing the, the article for this Christmas edition, and it certainly made me proud to see what the volunteers have managed to achieve. When we set out on our journey, and thanks to the being funded by the government for three years, we have actively sought to rebuild Neighbourhood Watch and make it contemporary for the future. We have a new board, a fantastic group of volunteers and also non-volunteer members who bring the skills we need. Without them, I certainly couldn't do my job. We have a new policy with the police, which actively shows how they will support us and how we will work with them. And across the state, we're seeing this implemented with fantastic results. As we find our way through this new partnership, we try things, sometimes we get them wrong, sometimes we get them right. But invariably, we find a new way of doing things and a better way. We've actively had a number of state forums where we have workshopped. We've workshopped about where are we going and what are we going to do in the future. Our volunteers are full of fantastic ideas. And it is great for me because I get the job of taking those ideas, putting them together and giving them to these very able people to take back out to their communities. One of the things that I think clearly shows where we have been in 2013 was our AGM and awards night that we recently had at the RSL in Caulfield. The previous year we had struggled with numbers and we had not had much support. But this year we were very much blessed with the number of people who came to show that Neighbourhood Watch was back on the, on the scene. Ken Lay, the Chief Commissioner, attended and, and presented awards. So did the Minister for Crime Prevention, Edward O'Donoghue. We all had a fantastic night. And the things that we recognised was the way we'd gone forward. We still deliver newsletters, but we also acknowledge that we have to do things differently if we're going to be contemporary. So we now have Facebook. We now have e-newsletters. And I'll talk a bit more about those as we go through. We, we acknowledge groups who had managed to put on events with over 6,000 people attending and brought together all the services within their community. At the end of 2013, we were also recognised on a national level. We won the Gr Malcolm Grant Volunteer of the Year Award, won by Jeff Clute, who lives in Manningham. <coughs> we also won the Federal Minister's Award for Innovation, for the work that we're doing on children's activities to sell the safety message. And in the Police Commissioner's Award, one of our police officers from Mildura received a, a certificate of recognition. Two out of three, as the song says, ain't bad. <laughs> so to 2014. When I first started to think about this, there was that feeling of how on earth do we top what we've done this year? But with the work that we have been doing, I think we have a very, very strong platform to do just that. We set out that we need to be contemporary with our communities. And some of that is challenging. I've just been dragged kicking and screaming into the virtual world of office. I have a new admin support who has taken me through using Dropbox, having my files in places that I can't see them, but it works. 
I've had to learn to use Facebook. And now I'm actually reasonably good at it and actually run the Neighbourhood Watch Victoria Facebook page. Each of our groups have taken on that challenge and I thank you for being not afraid to give it a go. So we will develop that, that further. We have developed e-newsletters and what we want to do is to develop a self-service website so that anyone can go on and say, I live in a particular area and the newsletter for that area will go to them. Because this is what people want. They want to know now and they don't want to wait for us to think about sending them things out. I also had to take myself into the world of YouTube and actually produced a little YouTube clip to go with our last edition of the Sentinel, which was all digital. We've, we've made that work, and although it still has a few teething problems, the next one will be better. But I challenge all of the Neighbourhood Watch groups to actually start thinking about how do we sell our message with all these wonderful new mediums that we can use. We're also working on how we enhance our face-to-face -face contact, producing contemporary literature. We won an award um, and, a, and a grant to develop a uh, diagrammatic brochure about family violence. This was so that you don't need to translate it into <coughs> many different languages to deal with our very diverse community. If we can achieve that, and from the feedback that we've had from White Ribbon and the other police jurisdictions, we think we've got it nearly right. We'll take that and the learning and use it to develop other, other diagrammatic brochures and this will come in very handy for one of our new groups. We recently started a community of Neighbourhood Watch in one of the most diverse communities I had come across. In Carlton Gardens there are 20, 20 different nationalities, all living in high-rise accommodation. They've taken the, the bold step <coughs> and want to come together, in spite of their differences of language and culture, to actually make their living space a better place. So we are supporting them, and along with the Department of Human Services, we have three different interpreters to every meeting. We have to understand their cultures. Something that, on the whole, Neighbourhood Watch has been very traditional and not had to, to worry about these particular things. The other part is, how do you make Neighbourhood Watch something that's attractive to young people? It's a hard ask, and it was a problem that I had in my previous role in CFA. There they had a slight advantage over us. They had big red shiny trucks that you could hop on and go to fires. <laughs> it's slightly harder with what do you do for young people for Neighbourhood Watch. But we've had a huge uptake um, with schools, hubs and scouts <coughs> and guides. And in fact we've been asked to develop a Neighbourhood Watch badge for the guides as they felt a bit miffed because the cubs and scouts had a badge and they've been getting all the attention. So with the great thinkers around, we have put our heads together and we're now working through at the regional level and right up to the top of the, the tree in the Guide Association and also the Scouts. We don't have to make the, the young people join us, but we really want them to understand the philosophy. If they can be safe, that will be a great credit to us. I recently attended a fantastic coffee club. This was a great way of having a neighbourhood watch meeting. We didn't have a meeting, we turned up and we met at a, at a coffee house which had kindly put away a whole area for us. All the work was done, all the work of the meeting, but what a great way, because invariably now, business is done over a coffee. So Neighbourhood Watch has again moved, and this was a group of what I could politely say were the older generation, but they had embraced this change and found it a great way to stay in touch. We have revamped our strategic plan. When I started, we had 16 pages. It's very difficult to go out and sell yourself with 16 pages. Now, we quite simply have one page. And that doesn't mean to say we will do less. What it says is that we clearly understand what we will do. We've related that we're in this to, to educate both ourselves and the, and the community. We're about joining partnerships so that we don't reinvent the wheel and we make the most of the resources. And also we're there to engage. We can engage on many, many forums, 
But one of the best, and one of the things that I enjoy most about being the Neighbourhood Watch is when you get to meet face to face. We're working smarter. We have partnerships with the SES and uh, White Walls here are going to undertake some work to look at how you better build the capacity of your community. So they are going to trial a program and if it works we'll then roll it out further. And again, SES need to do this, we need to do it. It's about community building, so why do it alone? We're working with Crime Stoppers. Yesterday was the start of the bushfire um, season in terms of getting the media ready. And Crime Stoppers, along with the police and the fire services, launched their campaign to, about bushfire arson. Crime Stoppers have the ability to launch the campaign. We have the people on the ground to help deliver it. In this partnership, we make Crime Stoppers stronger and they make us stronger. We're also working with White Ribbon to deal with violence in the workplace, at schools and in the home. We've also joined with the Federal Police in a program called Think You Know, which is about cyber safety. It is a program that educates uh, family members in how to stay safe. It is about letting the parents know what to look for to keep their children safe and even to let the grandparents know what to look for. We were asked to provide six volunteers for this as an initial trial. We've had 36 people put up their hands to give it a go. And the Federal Police have decided that, that they will take on all of those people and train them and help them to deliver the program. In hard economic times, it's important to target and measure what we do. We support the police, but it's not good enough just to say that. We need to clearly decide what needs to be done, work with them to set out what we're going to do, and then measure it. I'm sure Steve will talk about the things that are important for the Victoria Police in the next few years. We have been working, instead of doing general campaigns, to very much target what we do. And our neighbourhood watch groups are meeting with the police and talking about what are the hot spots. And not what necessarily has been, but what they think will be the trends and where we should put our labour. All of us have a limited number of resources. If we can use them better, it makes us a much more contemporary and much more better organisation for people to invest in. In all the times, we must actively review and refine. Somebody on the board told me that once we've finished a project, if we say we've finished, we've actually failed. Because what we need to be doing is reviewing and looking at how we improve. So, as we move forward, I challenge us all to, to remain relevant to the, to the mainstream of Victoria, but also to look at how we engage with those groups that sit on the edge. There are fantastic people from different countries that yet have to find their way to better engage in our, in our country and we need to make it easier for them. Neighbourhood Watch is one of those groups that are very well connected and can bring people together. And it never ceases to amaze me the ease with which you do it. I'm always very proud to go out and say I'm working for Neighbourhood Watch. And I encourage you to all be very proud of what you achieve, but also to celebrate your success. And having people such as Steve turn up tonight is a mark of the fact that people do notice what we're doing and we can celebrate that success. So I hope that gives you a little bit of where we're going and some of the challenges that we've been 